So who has it hardest in the heat? Who works the longest and gets the hottest? I don't think it should matter. You chose your career and knew it was part of the deal. Does that make someone else feeling the heat in what you consider to be good conditions, a wimp or soft? How does a little thing like you drive those big trucks? You must be rich. How do I get a job doing that? Not everyone is cut out to be a miner. Why not? What does it take to thrive and survive in this industry? Hello and welcome to another Beers with a Miner audio blog. No time to read? That's okay. Listen in as I read and then discuss blog posts from the madmumsy.com website. And today is episode number 45. Now let's dig in. Get it? Dig? Mining? <laughs> oh my god, I crack me up. Hello, how you going? I am on day two of my break after seven long night shifts. Yesterday, I stayed home and watched My Kitchen Rules on catch-up, lying on the couch in the aircon. I've got to say, that's my favourite way to recover after night shifts, dozing in and out, trying to catch up on the shows that I've missed, because if you know Mad Mumsy, you know I like my reality TV shows. It's my escape. I don't watch movies but I like to get involved with the characters and yell at the telly and, yeah, the cooking and also the renovation ones. The real miner says, for all the bloody cooking shows I make him watch, I should feed him better. (laughs) But that's him. He's a bit nuts, underground miners. Anyway, I'll get on. We're coming up to the two-year anniversary of the podcast on April Fool's Day, April 1. I can't believe that it's been nearly two years already. That also means the Australian Podcast Awards are coming. I've entered again this year in the industry category with episode 33 from last year. They have to have been released between February and February from last year. So episode 33, you may remember if you've listened. If not, I suggest you go back, madmumsy.com forward slash beers 33. It's with Soraya. She, uh, Soraya D'Arth, D apostrophe A-R-T-H, very posh, (laughs) but she's not. She's an awesome, lovely young lady who works underground as an electrician. She was the real miner's apprentice a few years back, and we go deep into her journey from being an environmental activist to a coal miner, and she was a finalist in the Women in Mining and Resources Awards, which is where I got to catch up with her. But you can hear all about that in the episode. You can also go back in your podcast app and find it there. Alas, last year was also when we had Cyclone Debbie hit our area hard here in central Queensland. It cancelled our trip to Sydney for the first Australian Podcast Awards. And this year, I'm hoping to get down to Melbourne for the second awards in May. So we'll see how we go. There's a few cyclones looming, but they seem to be right up the top, so see how that ends up. Although I wasn't a finalist last year, I got a lot of value from the feedback given by the judges, because these are judges, judges judging the uh, the awards. There is a popular vote, which listeners can vote for, and I've shared that on social media, but I believe it's closed now by the time this episode's out. So the... Awards are actually from other podcasters and producers and editors, people highfalutin in the podcast industry and they listen to our podcasts and give us feedback about all sorts of things. So it's worth entering just for that. And it, of course, helps get the podcast out there as well. And I get to connect with the awesome podcast community here in Australia, which is growing so fast and it's, it's great. Get on board. I wanted to get this episode out last week for you, but I was crook as a dog and I sounded terrible. So here we go, finally, with another episode. This is the latest article in Shift Miner magazine. Ask for it out in your camp or look for it in some of the servos. Have them in the Bowen Basin and mainly here in Queensland, but you can also check them out online at shiftminer.com. This article is all about how bloody hot it has been and the effects it has on us workers as we have to work in the heat. It was inspired by social media. Well, a couple of things. 
social media piqued my initial interest, if you like. I noticed a few people getting stuck right into an article or a link or something about a person who got sick with heat stroke. And it got me thinking about how different our roles can be in our mining industry. And then while I was out at work, I was sitting in the air con in my water truck watching two fitters in the heat hosing out a dozer. All I had to do was keep my foot flat so the water would come out. And I wonder why the bloody hell would they choose to do that? Like the real miner. Underground, they don't have air con and it's hot. And oh, bugger that, you know. I, so... Mad Mumsy style, I started to put pen to paper during that swing and this article that I'm about to read you, this audio blog, is the result. I hope you enjoy it, but I also hope that it gets you thinking a little bit too. How hot is it? Recently here in Queensland we have been experiencing some extreme heat. The official, in air quotes, Temp might be 42, but it can reach the high 50s at least in the pit. It's best to be on night shift. This means sleeping through the worst of it in your donger with the aircon on. If it's not real flash, it can affect your fatigue because you won't be getting any sleep. Having to get up and put on long pants, shirts and boots is no fun in the afternoon, but it sure beats being out in the dust, sun and heat of day shift. This happens every summer, and it shouldn't be rocket science for us to all get through it. What does your site do to help manage extreme heat? I've heard varying degrees from different sites and companies. As workers, we need to make sure they are listening to us and help us hack it out here, summer after summer, fixing and operating their machines, blowing up the dirt and getting the production they so keenly desire. So who has it hardest in the heat? Who works the longest and gets the hottest? I don't think it should matter. You chose your career and knew it was part of the deal. Does that make someone else feeling the heat in what you consider to be good conditions, a wimp or soft? This is another stigma that we as workers in our industry need to try and stamp out. It can be serious, even deadly. How long do you keep going before you let on that you're not right or you let a workmate struggle thinking they should just harden up? It's bloody hot for everyone and anyone can suffer from severe heat stroke, even you perhaps. Do you stay hydrated? Check your wee. (laughs) I can't believe I wrote that. Check your wee. It's a good sign. The lighter, the better. Unless you have Barocca every day, because it may be orange. That's my excuse sometimes. Not that I haven't been drinking enough water. Oh, come on, stop talking, get back to the writing, <laughs> the audio blog. Okay, back. If you don't look after yourself, you can go downhill real fast. Do you know what the signs are? It may be you or a workmate that struggles as heat stroke symptoms set in. Nausea. Red face, dizziness, headaches, delirious, hot, stop sweating and hallucinations are some signs. What do you do to manage it yourself? It's common sense and we hear it all the time but it also helps us to know what we can do. So here's just digressing slightly from the script. (laughs) I did ask the ERT about what the signs were. So that's where I got that from and also some of the things that we can do. But there'd be heaps of information out there at your site or you can always check it out on Google. I'm not a doctor or anything, but this is some common sense things just to get us all start thinking about it. Anyway, back to the blog article. (laughs) Blog article, doesn't matter. So here's some steps that we can take. So here's a few things that we can do and then I'll just um, have a quick chat with you about each one. These are just bullet points, but we'll just go a little bit deeper because we can on the podcast. Hang on, I'll just have a drink. Ah, So nice to be home. Okay. Shade from the harsh sun with things like a wide brim hard hat flap. Now they look pretty weird to me. So you have your hard hat and then you get this bit of It's kind of like stiff material that goes around the outside. But if you're in the sun a lot, 
they are great. Obviously, try and stand in the shade when you can. So if you're waiting to do your hot seat in your truck, either stay in the car and wait or stand in the shade. We don't want to be standing in the heat of the sun and all the dust. It's So whenever, wherever you can find some shade, get it. And as a water cart operator, we have been trying over the years for some shade at the fuel point, which would be nice. And usually they suggest just getting a hard hat flap. It's not quite the same. It, you know, it's still ugh, getting on top of your head. But anyway, not all sites have, um, what do you call that? <laughs> if you could see what I'm doing, I'm pressing my thumb on my, on my hand. A remote control for the water fuel point just to sit. So you can just sit in your truck, push the remote, out the water comes, push it again and it stops. Uh, the sites I've been on, you have to walk down, turn a big bloody handle, get back up in your truck and wait for it to fill up or wait down there. But when it's hot, obviously, common sense, get back in the air con for a bit and then walk all the way back down, turn it off, walk all the way back up. And when it's hot, you're filling up your water cart a lot in the daytime, especially. So, you know, water cart operators unite. <laughs> Sunscreen is another common sense thing uh, for when it's hot, but it also protects your skin. Uh, uh, you notice um, when you're driving, think about your hands as well and your forearms, although most sites you are meant to have your sleeves rolled down. However, some people like to show off their tattoos <laughs> or their muscly arms. So, but uh, I kind of used to do that, roll my sleeves up, but now I keep them down, probably because I'm getting older and, you know, don't want to get wrinkles and skin cancer. So it's common sense. Some people I've seen actually have driving gloves on. Not many, I must admit, but, you know, the sun belts in on your hands. It's like when you're driving your car, right? And when it's hot, obviously the sunscreen's going to sweat off. So we apply. Most sites... I'm pretty sure all sites these days have sunscreen supplied up at the crib hut. But you can also, you know, it doesn't hurt to buy, buy a $4 roll on and keep it in your bag and just do it yourself. Okay, next one is a singlet will absorb sweat under shirts. I remember one of our Team Tem girls told me years ago she wore a singlet underneath her work shirt and I'm like, Oh, aren't you hot with that? She said, no, because it absorbs the sweat on your skin and it actually makes you cooler. So ever since then, I've always worn a singlet under my work shirt and it does help, I think. So uh, there's a little free tip for you from Man Mumsy. Aircon to escape at least for a bit during the day in car or crib hut or machines. So... This is another no-brainer, but when you can, get out of the heat. You know, the fitters out there, jump in, jump in a car and leave it running. You've got to be sitting in it, obviously, for procedures and all of that. But whenever you can, just try to stay cool. As operators, we need to – do you know how to clean out the air filters in your truck? Um, they usually – well, depends on the truck, but it's just a big foam effort <laughs> thing – and you pull it out and bash the dust out. It's amazing how much dust gets in there. So if your aircon's struggling, try and do that first before you call the workshop. And they pretty much go, oh, my God, you know, harden up, princess. But it's uh, part of my fatigue management is to not be boiling in my truck because it can get hot in there with no aircon too. And most sites, I believe, you just stand it down on a hot day you got no aircon. Next we have water, ice, electrolyte cordials and ice blocks. Water, as I mentioned earlier about the pee, so we want to keep our water up, our water intake, not too many coffees and things like that. Um, put some ice in your water because it's going to get hot. Do you have an ice machine at work? And I tend to think how hygienic it is because if it's out there in the dust and it gets a bit dodgy. I've, I've just started putting ice because I had a drink bottle 
and the ice wouldn't fit in the hole at the top. So I'm like, oh, that's no good, is it? So I've bought a bigger one. And as you drink your water, the ice melts and you get a little bit more water too. <laughs> Uh, and most sites, again, have electrolyte cordials, which if you went to buy them yourself, I've seen them, and they're like 50 bucks or something for a bottle of cordial, but they're special. I didn't know that. I thought they were just, you know, green or orange cordials. But I don't have those. I don't know. I just have water. But a lot of people have those, and they give you the electrolytes and salt and all that sort of stuff. And also... I heard whilst I was um, talking about writing this article, I heard a few people said that sites they've worked on had the, I think it's hydrolyte ice blocks. So as, especially for people who are out in it all the time, like the drill and blast people who are just <laughs> standing out in the heat loading the shot. I don't know how they do it, but... Anyway, I think we talk about that a bit further down in the in the article. Moving on, we also want to rest in between hot jobs. So if you've been doing something and you're feeling really hot and flustered, you know, just chill out a bit, have a break. Don't worry about the pressure of the jobs that you've got to do because if you go down like a bag of shit, you're not going to get any of your jobs done. So have a rest, have some water, get in a bit of cool, get in the shade, and then... Uh, Go back, a hook back in. Plan hot tasks for a night shift. Now, this is probably more up to our supervisors and things, but we can stand up and say, don't you think we should be cleaning the delineators on night shift, not when it's 42 degrees? So it's common sense things like that is what I was talking about there. Swap operators around. So... If they are doing a hot job, like I think the water cart operators, if you have to get out especially to turn the tap on, the tap, the pump, um, you know, just do a stint each instead of all bloody day because it it takes it out of you. <laughs> I'm not a fitter, but, you know, I still get hot. And I've also seen when I was working in... Uh, northwest Queensland, we used to have these frozen neck scarf thingies. I don't, I don't know what, how else to call it, but it was like a scarf and it had a, a insert in there that you'd freeze. It's probably like a hot cold pack, I guess. And you'd freeze them and then put them around your neck and they lasted for hours. And actually now I'm speaking about it, I remember buying my dad one who's a keen golfer Hi, Dad. Love you. Um, and he plays down, he lives in South Australia, and it's very bloody hot down there. Different heat, though. He can't handle our heat with the humidity, and he won't play if it's over. I think he's got it down to about 37 because he just can't hack the heat now. He's getting on a bit. He even admits that. So he's not too bloody hot, not going. But I bought him from the golf shop a frozen neck scarf thingy <laughs> and he said it's excellent so that's I forgot about that there we go see it has it helps to talk not just write okay so that's the bullet points there as I say most of those are common sense and if you can think of any others hit me up let me know I'll go back to the article not much more nearly done now for a word from our sponsor Julia Hartman and the Bantax Accounting Group. Julia's my awesome accountant. She's written two books with financial expert Noel Whitaker, and she's got a passion to help us miners make the most out of our hard-earned cash. She's got heaps of tips and make sure that we get every cent we are meant to get and is right on the ball with everything. If you head to bantax.com.au forward slash miners, that's B-A-N-T-A-C-S, you can download a free booklet all just for us miners. And there's also a spreadsheet in there that helps you check off what tools you have for your trade, like your isolation lock, work boots, seven shirts, all of these sorts of things, and you can weigh them up and it'll tell you if you qualify weight-wise. 
to claim your trips out to work. And that's just one of the things that they've got over there. So I strongly urge you to head to bantax.com.au forward slash miners and see what they can do and find your nearest office as we come up to tax time. They're really on the ball, know what's going on with the tax department and there's heaps of other free information like property investing. If you really plan on doing some great things with your money, you want to do that, right? If you want to sell your house, can save a lot of money if you find out what to do first rather than in hindsight. And Julia, she'll, you know, make sure you get it right. And if you do it wrong, and then go and see her, she'll, <laughs> she'll up you <laughs> in the nicest possible way because she really cares about us and wants us to keep our money and not give it to the tax department. Anyway, head over to bantax.com.au forward slash miners and tell them Mad Mumsy sent you. Fitters inside machines, drill and blast on the shot, cleaners in hot dongers, filling up water carts, and yes, driving a truck with dodgy aircon. Now, I hear you saying, oh, poor bonehead. It can get very hot in there too. Cleaning out the filters from all that dust will help. Then call the workshop. My point is that it's all relative and shit can still go down if anyone gets crook from being too hot. That's the end of the article. It's time to close this baby out. I hope it got you thinking a little bit. And summer is ending soon, apparently. (laughs) Um, But if you're listening to this in the future, it might be hot right now and it could help you or one of your workmates. So just have a think about it. Any links that we discussed in this episode can be found at madmumsy.com forward slash beers45. That's Mad Mumsy with a Z or a Z, depending where you're from, I-E, and the number 4-5. I'd love to thank Julia Hartman from Bantax Accounting Group for sponsoring the podcast once again. I really appreciate your support to help keep me going. Be sure to check them out. And if you don't want to miss an episode, hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. And please leave a review. I leave, I read them all. And it inspires me to know that you're out there. Someone's listening. I'm not just talking to myself. Do you know that you have a podcast app on your iPhone? If you've got an iPhone, open it up. It's the little, it's the purple icon with the white bits on it. Open it up and type biz with a minor in the search bar. And there we are. Hit subscribe while you're there and you won't miss an episode. <laughs> Grab your mate's phone and do it to his too, or hers. You can also go to the show notes and listen right there, or most phones have podcast apps these days. It's pretty cool. And thank you so much for listening. If anyone asks you, how do I get a job in the mines, send them my way, because I've got this little school thing going on, free courses over at mining.teachable.com. Until next week, stay safe, be real, be special, and have fun, for we only live once. Oh, and stay cool. I'm off for a beer and a swim. Cheers. Still there? Did you see the cool monkey picture for this episode? (laughs) Oh, it cracked me. I loved creating that. It was pretty cool. I didn't know what to do, because I've got to submit a picture a graphic with my articles for shift minor so it gives me a little bit of time to play so if you did see it hit me up on twitter or facebook or instagram wherever wherever you play uh, i have twitter and uh, at mad mumsy on all of them with the hashtag monkey and i know you're one of the special peeps who listened all the way to the end thank you so much i really appreciate you Catch you next time, whenever that is.